Okay, slide 11. Four parts. A mass of spring with a force constant of 226 newton per meter is fastened at its left end to a vertical wall as shown below. Acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So you have the spring with a K, that's the spring constant of 226 newtons per meter. Mass 1 is 9 kilograms, mass 2 is 5 kilograms. Initially, the 9 kilogram and the 5 kilogram block rests on a horizontal surface with the 9 kilogram block in contact with the spring, but it's not compressing it and the five kilogram block in contact with the nine kilogram block. The nine kilogram block is then moved to the left, compressing the spring a distance of 0.4 meters and held in place while the five kilogram block remains uh, at rest as shown below. Determine, for part one, determine the elastic energy, the U stored in compressing the spring. Well, this one's pretty easy. U is gonna be one half times the K times X squared where the x is the distance that it gets compressed, this is the x, and the k value is that newton per meter, so this would be your k. So that's pretty straightforward, easy to solve. Part, part two, the nine kilogram block is then released and accelerates to the right towards the five kilogram block. The surface is rough and the coefficient of friction between each block and the surface is 0 0.3. The two blocks collide, stick together, and move to the right. Remember that the spring is not attached to the 9 kilogram block. Find the speed of the 9 kilogram block just before it collides with the 5 kilogram block. Answer in units of meters per second. So I'm going to say that the speed of the block just as it collides, we can find that using uh, a relationship between work and the kinetic energy. So the potential energy of the spring minus take away the work done by friction as the block is displaced will equal the Ke final minus Ke initial for the block. The block is initially at rest, so this goes away. The final kinetic energy is then the spring's potential energy minus the work done by friction. You got the spring's potential energy from part one. The work done by friction, you need to subtract away. That is gonna be the mu, the coefficient of friction, times m times g, where m is the mass of the nine kilogram or whatever the mass of the block is, times g. This difference will be what's left over for the final kinetic energy of the block. So to get the speed, you do Ke final equals 1 half mv squared to solve for v. That is 2 times Ke final over the mass of that block, and you take the square root. And that will be the velocity. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake here. This work done by friction is mu times mg times d. How could I forget? You have to take the force, in this case the force of friction, times the displacement. So what is the value for this displacement? This value is provided up here. It's the same as the, as the compression of the spring. So the same value for x, how much the spring gets compressed, is how far that block is going to slide until it gets with the second block. So I do apologize. Spring um, potential energy for part one, the work done by friction is the friction force, mu mg, and then you need to multiply by uh, the distance. I've already, I've already included the cosine information by the subtraction. It's okay, this will give you Ke, and then yes, you still do the same process. You take the square root of two times Ke final over m to give you the final velocity. Okay, for part three, find the final speed of both blocks stuck together just after they collide. So block one is coming in, that's your the nine kilograms or whatever the most left block is. It's coming in with this initial velocity. This is now the velocity from part two. This, the final velocity in part two is now the initial velocity in part three. And it's gonna collide inelastically with the less massive block, the five kilogram block. So this will be conservation of momentum. Delta P will equal zero. Only the nine kilogram mass has momentum. So M1 times this V initial from part two should equal M2, or sorry, M1 plus M2 times their unknown combined final velocity. 
M1 times V initial over the sum of M1 plus M2 will give you this final velocity for part three. And then for part four, find the horizontal distance the blocks move before coming to a rest. Here we're gonna use the work done by friction is what causes the two blocks to change their kinetic energy, going from a initial kinetic energy to a final kinetic energy of zero. The work done by friction is the friction force times the distance these two blocks will travel. That will equal Ke oh, times cosine of theta. My apologies, Fd cosine theta. That will equal Ke final minus Ke initial. Because the force of friction as the two blocks are sliding, they're in contact with each other. Friction going one way, their displacement going the other. The angle between these is 180 degrees and cosine of 180 is negative one. So this will be negative, the force of friction times their displacement will equal Ke final. They're gonna come to a stop. So this is gonna go to zero, this Ke final zero minus the initial kinetic energy that the two are gonna have, one half times M1 plus M2 times the final velocity from part three squared, or sorry, times the initial velocity. That's from part three and you will square that. Okay, uh, they want the distance the two blocks move, so this will be distance is equal to 0 0.5, that's one half, times the mass of your first block plus the mass of the second block times this initial velocity, which you're gonna square, and you get this again from part three. You will divide by this force of a negative on top and negative on the bottom, so the negatives will cancel. This force is the force of friction. Your force of friction will be the mu times m1 plus m2 times g. So you'll plug this in for your force of friction. Negatives are gonna cancel out, and this is how you'll find your displacement or the distance the two blocks travel. Thank you for watching, and study well.